Hey, welcome back to the Din the Dialogue. My name's Josh, and today we have the CEO and co-founder of Stream Media, Gio Punzo, with us. Gio, to kick us off, would you mind sharing a little bit about yourself and the background in the industry before we dive into the great story of Stream? Awesome, Josh, and thank you for uh, for having me and uh, representing Stream here today, Friday. Fantastic day in of uh, sunny Florida, Miami Tech. So Stream is the most innovative and interactive OTT platform in the world. How did we get there, right? Um, so I started my professional career in Boston. I worked for, for uh, Zoom Telephonics. What Zoom did, I don't know if you remember it, but uh, Zoom was the number two modem manufacturer in the world, right when the internet bubble uh, started. So uh, it was cool days where we were helping people go online and uh, what a great problem to solve. Right. Right. Uh, it was interesting too. So we were talking back in the nineties, believe it or not. So that was my first, uh, first gig out of college. But what was really interesting is that we did our first video conferencing back in uh, um, 97, 98, uh, where you actually will see people and say, Hey, is that your, I think I see your hand, you know, that's, that's how exciting it was. The quality, obviously, it was not H264 uh, or 65, but, but anyway, it was the first steps of communication with Zoom. Then I jumped into another company that was, pro that was solving a big problem, another publicly traded company, which was Brook Cloud Technology that then was acquired, but they were solving a big problem in the market, which was, again, you got to go back a few years ago where fax was huge, right? And uh, how do you get a fax as an email? It was impossible. It was just paper back in the days. But uh, and many institutions had to use uh, fax as a mission-critical way of communication. So uh, this company had all the patents uh, for actually the CEO. That company sits on our board now, Eric Geiler. Eric, love you. Uh, and... Um, and, and Brookta Technology solved our big problems, uh, had uh, um, complete uh, world uh, domination in the, in the fax to email space, created something that was pretty cool, created ISVs, independent software vendors around their product. Somehow, you know, our industries are a little bit like that, right? You have yeah. a major player, you got different, uh, uh, an ecosystem that gets built yeah. around it. So then from Brookdale, then I went to a company called Dialogic, and that was really cool. A spin-off of Intel. Uh, actually, they were independent, and they got bought by Intel. Then they got spin off. I got involved in it. And these are the first guys doing voice recognition. So uh, think of Alexa now, where we're talking and listening. Uh, the, 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 you know, Dialogic was the pioneer in that. After And they were also a pioneer on video gateways. So one of the customers, for example, that we're using video gateways technology by their logic was Vonage. You know, we all know yeah. what Vonage does. Um, so that was like in the early stages of video gateway. So then from there, so more, you know, telecom solving big problems on, on big networks. Then I go into live view broadcast, you know, and, and that was interesting. Startup uh, out of uh, Israel changing the way content distribution was being done from satellite, very expensive. Uh, every time you wanted to do a breaking news, live streaming, uh, it, it would take you 45 minutes. You got to wait for the satellite truck and it was super expensive, you know, 45 to, I don't know, $65,000 for a breaking news of two minutes. So here comes live view. Now you can do it on a backpack. They're putting, they're putting, they're connecting different 3G and 4G SIMs inside the same backpack. And that stream was going directly to the master control room at broadcast quality. So this was the beginning of streaming for broadcasters. So I've always been involved in streaming, right? From, from back in the Zoom days. And, uh, and, 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 and with Brook Trout, with Dialogic, with Live View, now we're getting into broadcast streaming. Super interesting because that's where I met my co-founder. And then we said, okay, the broadcasters were having another interesting issue. The first one was they want to reduce the cost of satellite and go and, uh, and, and distribute the content in a much more fast and efficient way 
um, using the live view backpacks. Uh, but then what do you do with the streaming content? How do you distribute it to more places, engage and monetize? And this is also the same time when Netflix started showing up on the screens, taking over, uh, taking over the the first screen, yeah. and maybe even the second screen. So that's a little bit, you know, I think it went off on on, on, the, on the longer note here, but that's that's where I came from. So very excited uh, to be here with you and uh, discuss other problems that were solved. Yeah, no, that's that's great. I love I love hearing all of that and where you've come from because. My question for you normally is to dive right into, tell me about Stream, but I kind of want to back up for just a second and, and talk about those three, three different companies you kind of jumped through. It was all in the media space. And as a co-founder, you already mentioned, you identify a problem or an issue, and that's what creates a new organization. Now, as you already know, in the media space, in the ad industry, there are a ton of issues, right? So right, right, right. what made you and your co-founder look at um, Stream and the issues you guys were solving as that's what I want to go and try to fix versus so many of the other things you probably saw in the industry. Yeah, and and um, and, and it's it's it became a mission for us, right? So we saw this huge problem of distribution of content that now you know back you know again you go go back maybe seventy years ago where that content was just starting to be streamed by major broadcasters and they didn't know what to do with it, right? They really didn't know, they knew what, where to put it on television, but they didn't know how to put it on the on, on web. They didn't know how to put it on apps. And uh, they didn't even know, um, you know, back then Roku didn't, didn't, I don't even know if it existed yet, you know? Uh, Apple TV was not as strong and open to additional um, content apps. So the big problems that we wanted to solve was, First was distribution. You know, let's help content providers take the stream and go on uh, on on the web. So taking that content, streaming on web on multiple pages, uh, and and also on iOS, Android, um, and we call it you know just a simple play, right? So so let's get them to distribute that content on multiple um, multiple platforms, and then we said, okay, there's more to it because the user wants to stay on your platform. How do you how do you keep the users to stay and not start moving on to Facebook, Instagram, TikTok? So you got to create engagement. So the other piece that we added was an engagement component to our um, to our service, to our value, right? To our value proposition. But then we said, okay, the user now is distributed. They can see your content everywhere, right? They can see, they can engage with you on all these different platforms. Uh, how do they make money? You know, how do they make money? So there are different ways that an OTT provider can make money. There's the traditional way, which is subscription. And, and you know, I, I don't know about you, uh, Josh, but how many, how many OTT plans do you subscribe to? I'm on the lower end, probably, probably three, three or four. Okay. But still, you know, it, it, would you, why are you on the lower end? You know, come on, I get a subscribe to another one. So SVOD model, it's a great way. But then there's the AVOD model, which is advertising video on demand or advertising business model for OTT providers, which we absolutely love. And we love it because we have a patent technology on advertisement where working with you guys at Digna, we can take the ads and put it inside our patent technology and money times 10 times more. And this is huge, 10 times more than regular pre-roll mid-roll and post-roll, which yeah. is, which is huge. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. And so it's, it's been a pleasure working with you guys and being partnered with you. Same here. And so for, for publishers though, that are, that are watching this, how would you describe where stream sits in the ecosystem? Because there's, there's the SSPs, the DSPs, the DMPs, there's all these lovely acronyms, but where does stream <laughs> right, sit right. in this ecosystem? Right. And, and I think, uh, and I think you're right. You know, there, there, there's so many different ways that, that we can, that we can play. We're that, you know, video technology partner that can help you really uh, innovate uh, your video offering and multiply times 10 your ads revenue from day one, which is insane. You know, one, one of the biggest challenges we have, Josh, is teaching uh, broadcasters to, start thinking innovation uh, and uh, and sometimes it's easy oh yeah i want i want digital transformation i'm ready for it 
but uh, but then you go back to the team and say, oh no, but we love digital transformation, but we'd like to continue things as they are. What? Yeah. <laughs> that makes no sense. So by adapting our video player and some other um, video ads that we have, what you can do is uh, you, you, you can multiply 10 times more your digital ads revenue. And uh, uh, the way to do it is uh, we, we split the player in two. On the left side comes in the video ad. On the right side, you continue to watch your live streaming or on demand. Automatically, what that happens, and, and let me go back. The number one reason why people leave a video player is because of pre-roll, right? You go on YouTube and uh, you're watching a YouTube video, you're focused on skip ad. You just focus on the skip ad. Uh, with our technology, you start to watch the video. You're never interrupted. The advertisement comes in, spits the screen, and then it goes away. It's a beautiful thing. 95% viewability rate. That's never heard of yeah. in our industry. Yeah. That's, that's impressive. And I think uh, something that I think most publishers that are trying to figure out the video landscape should probably be paying attention to. So one thing that I'm, I'm really interested in is the strategy. You already mentioned it, right? You're, you're talking to some publishers on innovation. And one of your challenges right now is making sure that people are educated in that space. Education is huge, yeah. How, how are you approaching 2021 with a strategy around video and, and, and educating the, the, I think your clients, right? On how important that is and what you guys offer differently. Is there, is, are there certain routes that you're taking or ways of explaining it? Because video is kind of new, vast IMA, OTT, CTV. It's been around forever. Like you said, live streaming, but people are still trying to figure it out in the publisher space. Yeah, no, education is definitely the way to go. Um, and uh, and it's not it's not easy uh, just because again you're dealing with um, you're dealing with uh, enterprises broadcasters and so on that are used to doing things uh, the not not only them but also the uh, ad agencies are used to doing and serving ads exactly the same way for the last maybe ten years right so introducing a new technology is uh, it's always a challenge. My, the most beautiful thing is, you know, showcasing that your customers are making five, 10 times more than they were before. So it's so, it's so simple, you know? And again, if a customer is making money, he's never gonna leave. Uh, there is, I wanna make sure that this is clear. There is a, a process and adaptation because you have to educate the broadcaster and the agency that they're working for. But then the beauty is show me the money. You know, the money's gonna come in uh, because again, you, you remember technology gets used so that you can make a leap, a jump into, into the future, right? That's why you're gonna adapt new technologies. And, uh, and we're, just, we're just super excited to pay our customers five to 10 times more than they were making before. Yeah, no, I mean, I feel, I feel that, that alone is the value prop. And then you have what you're, you're explaining as, don't listen to me, let me show you. And it's kind of sharing what your current clients are doing, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and again, uh, it's all about analytics as well. Uh, so when, when I mentioned 95% viewability rate, 85% completion rate, these are, these are real numbers. You know, you can go back to our uh, inside analytics tool and see how your ads are performing. And again, we have agencies saying, wow, we never see these numbers before. And it, and it totally makes sense, but but it's 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 new. It's new for the industry. The ones you know what, what has happened. I think with COVID is that there is an acceleration of yeah. I want to try new stuff because otherwise yeah. I'm stuck, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so our business is booming. Um, the customers that are with us, they're taking advantage of the 150 plus uh, tools that we have for you to distribute, engage, and monetize. And it's, it's just a beautiful thing. It's a, it's a partnership at the end, as you know, you know, you yeah. get close to a customer, it's a partnership. But the most beautiful thing is uh, sharing that monetization piece with them through innovation is, is what we love. Yeah, no, that's, that's perfect. You, you guys scale when your clients scale. And I think that's, that's, a, great, that's a great story. So for those clients, those, those publishers that you normally talk with, what, what kind of advice would you give them approaching i mean you can take this as ad industry as a whole but i think you you have a lot of knowledge on the video side 
what would you tell a publisher if they're trying to approach it for 2021 and their strategy? Um, yeah, yeah, don't, don't wait, don't advice. wait too long, right? I okay. think the biggest message, don't wait too long. Uh, we've had, so, so we've had somebody, you know, and this has happened in the last, again, maybe six to eight months, companies that we were talking to a couple of years ago say, hey, Gio, we're back. Uh, we're ready now. Uh, yeah, but if you would have done this two years ago or six months ago, you would already have started to see the benefits. So, um, so why did you wait so long? Again, you know, COVID, COVID has accelerated the need for digital communication and monetization. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so, so we're, we're glad that we can help because it's tough times. It's tough times for everybody. And a lot of companies and businesses have to reinvent themselves. So we give you tools to reinvent yourself. Um, but don't wait too long. You know, the big message, don't wait too long. We, we have a proven technology that can increase your ads revenue times 10 period. Just use it, start using it, start using it now. And the relationship we have with you is that we can fulfill those ads as many times we, without being intrusive uh, so that the customers can, uh, can grow into this new digital business because everything is moved to digital, right? Well, we're having this conversation <laughs> on, a, yeah. on a video conferencing call. Yeah, I feel that the normal advice in some situations, if you can analyze something, is be patient. But in this case, it's it's we're past patience. Let's let's jump on the train and and get into video as soon as possible. Yeah, no, video is huge. Uh, live streaming is is definitely a huge component of it. So uh, for us, you know, we see live streaming not only again you, you use it to um, to monetize, but also to engage. Right, end users want to see more live, and live is not easy. Live has uh, has a lot of uh, hiccups. But that's the beauty of life, you know. Yeah. We're we're not, you know. You, you you don't have to be an NBC or a, uh, I don't know a, a Fox or a, or, a, or a Disney when you're doing your live. The end user is expecting the 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 strange behavior because you know when you go on Instagram Live on Facebook Live, it's never perfect. So that user right. generated content has shifted. I think the quality of production. But live streaming is hard. Now, how do you monetize it? Number yeah. one. Number two, you should definitely use it for engagement, right? So, and, and then you can always do something with live, which is pretty cool. You can record live and then show it as a video on demand. In all of these different uh, scenarios, you can still add the advertisement, not as a pre-roll anymore, but with this new technology that we bring into the game, which is called Inside Ad, where, where now you can have a new type of business model. And I think it touches a little bit on, on one of the questions that you had is, again, don't be afraid to change the model. Don't be afraid to try new, new business models. Um, I'm a big fan of AVOD. I'm, I'm really a big fan of it because we have the technology that allows you to be successful in AVOD. Yeah. Uh, I would never do an AVOD business model with pre-roll because again, it's the number one reason why people leave a, leave a video. Yeah. So why would I even think that way? Right. But yes, I would do it using our technology that is um, that is linked, you know, to 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 Dean as well for fulfillment of a fantastic high CPM ad inventory. Yeah. So for people that are trying to read up and learn as much as possible on on this piece, because you've touched on a lot of really good nuggets for I think publishers watching, where would you send them? Would would you say come talk to Strain? Would you say go Google? AVOD, what, what, what's your advice there? No, no, for sure. You know, check, check out our webpage, stream.com. Uh, it's, it's the concept of going direct to consumer. You're a publisher. Uh, go direct to consumer. Create more content uh, because in the end users want to see more content. Make sure that that content is on multiple screens, right? So it's not just web. It's got to be iOS. I had a great conversation yesterday with a, a huge broadcaster that said, you know, we are, we, we just started a web with you guys, but we're thinking of going on multiple platforms, uh, but how can we make more money? So, so listen to this, Josh, it's super interesting. So I'm a big broadcaster. I already have content. I'm putting the content on web video content. Yeah. Great. How do I make more money? Well, what if you are now on iOS, Android, Roku, 
Apple TV, same content. Now I'm on more platforms and now I can put more advertisement on these different platforms from the same content investment, just by adding more distribution platforms, I made more money. Yeah. So, so that's it. And then what you do, you, when, once you engage more with more tools, there's more traffic on your platform, more traffic on all your platforms gets you to monetization. So we have a formula that is C times uh, D times E equal M. So content is great, but if you're not distributed everywhere, and then if you're not engaging, you're not going to be able to monetize at its fullest. Yeah. Super simple. <laughs> I, it's, I like, you know I like that it's equation. So it's so simple that, that it's scary that it's simple. But, but again, when you're going through digital transformation, it, you know, you got to go back and say, hey, team, we got to move now to multiple. All right, who's going to manage this? Who's going to manage that? Who's going to create the graphics? So we actually even covered all of that. Because again, when you go to iOS, Android, Roku, Apple TV, you got to start creating graphics for it. You got to start video editing. Um, so we've, we have created a, a digital implementation team, a, a division of our company that just focuses on helping you to, through that transition because it could be, you know, it could be, it could be heavy for, for a company. You learn it and you take it on your own or you look at yeah. us as, hey, you know what? These guys are also are an agency providing these additional services. Cool. Let's work with them. Yeah. That, that's that's rare. I think you see that in some companies, the larger companies too. So it's probably a little more agile being um, streamed, but having a focus and a strategy in a certain area and you're going all in on it. You have an entire yeah. team for that because it's done well. So props to you, Gio. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah and I've had, I received an email this morning from a customer and said, you guys thought about it all. I'm so happy that we met and let's start working together. And yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a great feeling, you know, yeah. uh, because yes, Yes, we're trying to, again, we're trying to help uh, create a new business model in these crazy times that we live in. But you got to do, you know, big message to the publishers. You have to do it. There's money on the table. You you know, you know, there's so much money. You can make a lot of money on digital, but you just got to have the right strategy and the right partners. Yeah, for sure. 100% agree with that one. Although I'm a little biased. So for, for people watching today, what's the easiest way for publishers to get in contact with you and Stream? I know you gave us the website already, but um, any places you'd like them to go check out? I know you're very active on social. Yes, uh, they, they can contact uh, me directly via email, geostream.com uh, or uh, Instagram. You can check out the, the Stream uh, page on Instagram. Um, and you know, there's so many ways, you know, check, check us out, uh, contact us. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to do demos as well to explain how you can, uh, you can win in this, in this digital game. Yeah. Perfect. Sounds great. Well, everybody, thank you for watching today. I hope this was a great video and did a dialogue for you. If you have any questions, comments, leave one in the comment below. Also go ahead and like the video. And if you'd like and have any suggestions for who you'd like to see on the next one, please leave that in the comments below as well. Gio, thanks for jumping on and sharing your story. Josh, thank you. Thank you for having me.